Um, so just a quick review about the three kinds of unemployment, frictional, structural, and cyclical unemployment. Uh, so frictional unemployment is the um, least problematic kind of unemployment. So uh, it just takes some time for you to search for a job, but you do have the skills needed to be employed. So that's frictional employment. Usually the duration is shorter, just several weeks. You should be able to find a job. And structural employment is the most serious kind of employment because it's the kind of employment that occurs when the market structure has changed. So your skills are no longer needed. And to get another job, you need a job retraining. And finally, cyclical employment is caused by recession. So without recession, you should be able to be employed but uh, you're out of your job because of a recession. And remember, we also talked about natural rate of unemployment. That's the sum of frictional unemployment and uh, structural unemployment. And uh, um, when we say that our economy has full employment, it doesn't mean that your unemployment is zero. It just means that in your economy, you have a natural rate of unemployment meaning um, you have frictional and structural unemployment. And remember, we cannot let the structural unemployment or frictional unemployment to go away. The reason is that during any time, you are going to have uh, uh, people who are just looking for a job because they're temporarily out of job and they still have uh, uh, skills needed to be employed. Um, maybe you just graduate from college, it takes some time for them to find a job. So you can't get rid of frictional employment. And you cannot get rid of structural unemployment either because structural unemployment occurs when market structure changes. And market structure is always changing because technology is always improving. So you're always going to have some kind of skills that are not needed anymore because of technology improvement. So you can't get rid of structural unemployment either. So the sum of structural employment and frictional employment is the natural rate of unemployment. And if your economy is operated at the natural rate of unemployment, meaning you have full employment, right? That means your economy has reached its potential, correct? So that GDP, we call that potential GDP, right? When your economy is operated at its potential, meaning we only have natural rate of unemployment then that GDP we call that potential GDP. So potential GDP is GDP at natural rate of unemployment. And the next slide talks about Oken's law. So um, you will ask what happens if our economy is not operated at its potential? Then you look at our current economy and we find the actual GDP subtract potential GDP, then you get a GDP gap. So let me write it down. Um, we have GDP gap. That's equal to actual GDP minus potential GDP. And your actual GDP is your economy operating at the actual unemployment rate. Okay, your economy, economy under um, actual unemployment rate. So I just write UE, okay? UE stands for unemployment rate. Which means that unemployment includes frictional unemployment plus structural unemployment, plus cyclical unemployment, all three of them. And your potential GDP is your economy operated at natural rate of unemployment, which means frictional unemployment plus structural unemployment, and that's it, okay? 
So you're like, wait, 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 I'm confused. Why does he have anything to do with me? What is this, right? Now, I'm going to use a parable to teach this, okay? So if you don't understand this, just erase that for now, okay? Remember, there's a man in black, there's a limping thing, mm -hmm. and then you forget about everything, right? So, bing, okay? So don't worry about that for now. I'm going to talk about your grade, your study, okay? So think about this. Um, suppose in midterm one, if you use all the time available to study, then you will reach your potential grade, I suppose, right? So suppose your potential grade Let's say it's 90, okay? You use all the time available to study. Your potential grade is 90. Okay. But before the exam, you went to a uh, friend's party, right? And suppose you're 21, so you drank maybe a little bit too much beer, and you feel a little tipsy, so you couldn't study very well, and the next morning you had to hand over. So you're at your potential, right? And then, so you get your actual grade, Your actual grade is 80. Well, because you were partying, you weren't studying, right? That happens, right? And then you have a grade gap, right? So your grade gap is what? 80 minus 90, that gives you negative 10, right? So that's your grade gap. Why is that you have a grade gap? Well, because you were doing your best you could have reached your potential. But because when you could study, you weren't studying. So that's the grade achieved when you use all the time available to study. Using all the time available to study. Right? But you didn't do that. You were partying, right? So that's the grade you achieve not using all the time available. I'm, I'm talking about time available, right? Um, not, not that you're cutting your sleep or not showering, not eating, okay? Just the time available. Just studying. So your grade gap tells you that, oh, it's just too bad because when I could have studied, I didn't. And as a result, there's a great gap. I didn't reach my potential. Okay? Which one you can see more? That one? Not, not using all the time available to study, right? So when you could study your partying, maybe you were playing with Facebook, maybe um, you were watching a movie, right? A lot of things you could do instead of studying. So you didn't reach your potential. Now going back to this economy, it's the same thing, okay? If we have a recession, that means there are some laborers out of jobs. They could be producing goods and services, but because of the recession, they were laid off. They were fired from their job. So they could not produce goods and services. And as a result, our economy cannot reach its potential GDP, okay? That's just it. Because of cyclical unemployment. And here it's because you're partying. Okay? Alright? So um, the next one is. Um, oh, wait a second. I want to show you the, the following slide. You can see that GDP gap, when it's negative, that means you have cyclical unemployment. We're not reaching our potential, right? But you can also have positive GDP gap. Or that means the economy is overheated. Okay? It's kind of like. You're studying like crazy because you, you really want a good grade, so you're not taking care of yourself anymore. You're not sleeping, you're not eating, you're not going to the bathroom. You're just studying. You're using all the time to study, not just the time available. Okay? So the economy can be doing that too. But please, please uh, take care of yourself, okay? Don't do this. But I'm trying to give you a parable so you understand it, okay? So the economy can be overheated. And that usually happens when you have. Uh, um, Stock, stock market bubbles, 
So you look at paper, hey, I, I, I'm rich. So I go out, go, out, go shopping, buy a lot of goods and services, right? And then later on, the market crashed, okay? So yes, you can have economy overheated. Everybody's buying, so we all think the stock market will only, only go up, will not go out to buy, okay? So that you can have, yes, you can have uh, actual GDP higher than potential. Going back to Ockham's law, so Ockham's law tells you for one, every 1% one of cyclical unemployment creates about 2% of a negative GDP gap. So for example, if your um, cyclical unemployment is equal to 2%, let's say, if your cyclical unemployment is, cyclical unemployment is 2%, then you multiply that 2% by 2, then you will have a negative 4% of GDP gap, meaning um, your GDP, your actual GDP will be 4% lower than your potential. Okay? So Ocon's law tells you the cause of recession and unemployment. Because these people could be working if there were no recession. Okay, so we're losing goods and services. Questions so far? Questions? Okay. And uh, um, so the next one talks about um, an equal burden. So when you have unemployment, typically the employment rate of, uh, um, say, teenagers is higher than adult workers. And also uh, depends on your race, ethnicity, and your gender. Um, the employment rate is different, and that you might easily jump to a conclusion, say, "Hey, um, there is discrimination against minorities." So when you are doing research, it's very important that you control for many factors. You need to control for, of course, race and ethnicity, but you also need to control for education and uh, experience. That's very important because if say if a um, Caucasian person um, has lower unemployment rate, you might jump to a conclusion that there is discrimination. But maybe that's because also that person has higher education level or because that person has uh, more years of experience, right? So when you are doing regression, who has taken statistics? So when you are running on regression, you need to put all kinds of dummy variables in there to control, right? So, so once you learn uh, statistics, you will, you will know that. And uh, um, I do want to mention that when there is job market discrimination, um, if this discrimination comes from consumers, unfortunately, if discrimination comes from the consumers, then the market is going to reinforce it. But if discrimination comes from employers, then the market is going to correct it. Okay, so you see two different directions, right? Once again, if discrimination comes from consumers, then the market is going to reinforce it. But if the discrimination comes from employers, the market is going to correct it, meaning less discrimination. Now I'm going to give you an example, okay? I think I told you about that in the previous class. Anyway, so uh, suppose you're going on a date, okay? You're going on a date and you're bringing your boyfriend or girlfriend to a Japanese restaurant because he or she likes Japanese food very much. So you really want to impress your boyfriend or girlfriend. And So you bring this important person to uh, a Japanese restaurant and you arrive at 11.30, so the restaurant just opened and it's empty inside and uh, um, there's a sushi bar, you plan to sit at a sushi bar where you can look at the chef making the sushi for you. And because the restaurant just opened, so you can sit anywhere in the sushi bar. And there are two sushi chefs there. So it, if you sit um, close to this sushi chef, then this sushi chef is going to make sushi for you. If you sit close to that sushi chef, then that sushi chef is going to make sushi for you. Correct? Now, so these two sushi chefs, one is Caucasian, the other one is an Asian. And because it's a new restaurant, you've never been there. Okay, so now I ask you, which side do you sit? Who says I want to sit with the Caucasian sushi chef and eat? The sushi is made by him. Raise your hand. Asian? Asian sushi chef? Raise your hand. Very high, please. I'm going to count. Okay, 16 of you. How about the rest of you? You don't have, you don't have an opinion, boo? 
you don't care. You just flip a coin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So why is it nobody wants to sit with the uh, uh, Caucasian sushi chef? Uh, what? Maybe he made some more sushi. Uh, okay, so you're thinking that he can't make sushi because you want the real experience. Oh, okay. Like what you okay. said about you. No, why, why didn't you choose to sit there? Uh, I should speak all in words, you know? I wasn't going to have both. He missed some words. Okay. So you're the only one who chose to sit with the vocation. Okay. So one contrast to 15. Okay, so anyone else? Why didn't you choose to sit? Shanks are very quiet. Why didn't you choose to sit with the Caucasians when you said? Because you assume that. I'm sorry. That's okay. Alright, you have a turn. Strong. Because, uh, you would think that the Asian sushi stuff would be better because it's an Asian dish. Okay, because it's an Asian dish. Okay, so how do you know that the Caucasian can eat sushi? Maybe he grew up in Japan. Maybe he went to the best culinary school in Tokyo. How do you know? Well, because statistically, that's not really a thing you see that often. Yeah, he has to take it. Okay, I like that. You're, you're, you're using statistics. You don't see that often. So you make a judgment because you're white. You can't make sushi. Right? Right? Yeah, I mean, we're all kind of right? biased. Yeah. I think that's there you go. Yes, you're saying, no, uh, but uh, I'm not going to sit there. Right? Yeah. Right? Right? So here's the thing. Look, if you go to a Japanese restaurant, you're actually going to see uh, quite a lot of uh, Hispanic. Uh, they're in the back. They're in the back making ramen. You don't see them. But don't see them from They're all Asians. But maybe, the, how do you know the Asian can make sushi? Well, maybe the person from Thailand. Right? It's not a Japanese, but well, the probability that his Japanese is definitely higher. So I'm going to sit there because the probability he makes good sushi is higher, right? You're making you're making an educational guess. Yes. So even though he makes good sushi, well, well, not, unless it's really, really truly outstanding, otherwise, you know, people are just going to give judgment. You can't make sushi, so I'm not going to sit with you. I'm not going to eat your sushi. So how about uh, think about girls? You see OBGYN, right? Do you prefer a male or female doctor? Who oh, prefer? I'm different. I'm, yeah. You're different? They're both I've doctors. Yeah, You're different? Oh. Who prefer a, a, a female doctor? Girls, raise your hand. Raise your hand very well. Come on, you have a preference. Okay. One, two, three. No, you can't raise your hand. It's only you my hand. Do you know what an OBGYN is? Oh, no. <laughs> Lower. 
and they can reflect the same on wage on the price of the product they produce, right? So the product of their the, the, the product they produce are going to be more competitive, making their prices lower. So we can we can drive the other one out of the market, right? Are you with me? Are you with me? So so sadly, discrimination that comes from the consumers, the market will really enforce it. But if the discrimination comes from the employer, then the market will correct it. Okay, so that's discrimination. And uh, so this is destroying information, okay? And it's very important when you look at the employment rate, you need to control for everything, control for education, control for um, age, of course, years of experience, and gender, so on and so forth. So you won't jump to a conclusion that there's discrimination against a certain color or a certain gender. And uh, um, so, so far we've been talking about the cost of unemployment, that's the loss of uh, um, GDP, because these people, these laborers who are out of the job, they could be producing goods and services, but there are other costs. So for example, if you're out of a job for a long time, then you're going to lose your skill because you don't use it, you're going to lose your skill. And uh, um, lose of uh, self-respect, and you lose your enthusiasm, and family disintegration, we heard about that, right? Because we don't, we, if you lose your job, then you can't pay your bill, you can't pay for your rent, uh, so we can't live here anymore, so where do we send the kids? We send the kids to grandparents, right? Family disintegration, and poverty, of course, because you can't pay the bill, and uh, racial and ethnic tensions. So, for example, if you lose your job to robots, we talk about you lose your job to robots, but you don't know what robots are, and you don't even know that you're losing your job to robots, right? So you can't hate robots, so you're going to hate others, right? So that's going to cause uh, racial tension. And uh, of course, uh, um, mental problems, suicide, homicide. So I'm going to show you a video clip that I got from YouTube. This is a, a video clip of uh, Up in the Air. Anyone watched it? That's a movie. That's a movie um, of uh, George Clooney. The background story is uh, year 2008, the recession. And so here's the idea. George Clooney is the guy who um, whose job is to fire people, okay? And he has an assistant who will help him to fire people, and they're going to fire someone. Yes.
So because you didn't watch the movie, you know what happened. You know if she actually committed suicide. She actually does, yeah. She did. Yeah. She did. She did. It's pretty sad. Yeah, she did. Okay. Don't do anything silly, okay? Um, because you don't you don't know what is ahead of you. Well you see it's a cycle, right? When you're in the troll, what's next? Expansion. Okay? Any one of you have children already? You do? Children is a place of your heart, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you guys, yeah, I know it sounds pretty cheesy, but you are a piece of heart of your parents. So don't do anything silly, okay? When you destroy their heart. Okay. 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 So, um, well, before we talk about CPI, I actually want you to try some practices. So I'm going to turn off this video cam. Please take out your textbook.